Hey guys, it's Charmise Idris here and today I wanted to bring you a video on how to properly handle your sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. Um, I know it can be a little scary when you're first starting soap making or when you're going from doing melt and pour to co-processed soap, but honestly y'all, you just have to go by the precautions, you have to go by the rules and you'll be perfectly fine. So stay tuned. So of course lye is caustic, but when handled properly, it is safe to use. So I just wanna go through a couple things that you need to know before you start using lye. So the first thing is the gear that you need to have. So as you can see, I do have on my gloves and I also have on a long sleeve shirt because when you mix it or pour it, it can splash back on your skin and cause a burn. So just don't have your skin out. So also have pants on and closed toed shoes. So another piece of necessary safety gear you need is eye protection. So you can do safety glasses, safety goggles, but I actually like these. Um, I didn't see them until the pandemic came, but when I saw them, I bought them because they don't fog up. And if it splashes back, um, of course it protects my eyes, but it'll also protect the money maker. No, but it'll protect my face. So yes eye protection. Oh, and one more thing about the gloves. I do have on like the disposable exam gloves, but I also see other people using the dishwasher gloves like Dexter's mom used to wear on Dexter's laboratory. Um, those are good too. So the next piece of gear you may want to invest in is a mask. So I have a dust mask here um, and I use this one most of the time because when you see me on my videos you'll see that I mix with ice and water um, and that's because I like to cut down on the fumes I'll talk about that a little more later but if I am mixing just straight out with no ice just water and lye it will heat up and the fumes will go and so I use this type of mask because I like to be safe um, and yeah speaking of fumes let's talk about where to mix your lye so always mix in a well ventilated area. When I first started out, I did it on my apartment balcony because I wanted to be as ventilated as possible just in case. But after a while, I just started cracking the window and sometimes I would have a fan going out the window. Um, but yes, so be in a ventilated area. And then also when you're first starting out, you may wanna mix inside the sink just to be safe. And so now that we're talking about actually mixing the lye, it is very, very, very important to make sure you mix the lye into the water and never the other way around because I'm told that a lye volcano can happen if you put the water into the lye. So always lye into water. I've never seen a lye volcano, but I'm never going to because I'm always going to do the lie into the water and I'm just going to believe that that's what happens if it happens the other way around. So I am going to show you actually how I mix lye but first I wanted to tell you what you need to mix it in. So the container that is safe to hold lye. Um, there are two containers that I know of for sure that are lye safe that I use. Um, it's the polypropylene with the five. So here's a symbol. <laughs> so that is the one that I use. So these containers are both from Dollar Tree. Um, they're like $1.25 now because they went up. But <laughs> these are both from Dollar Tree and they both have the PP symbol with the five on the bottom. So I use this one. I like this one the most because it does have a cap and I don't always do the um, soap the same day as I do the lye. So I'll mix the lye one day and then the next day I'll come back and actually make the soap. So you need to have a container on it if you're doing that. Um, and side note, make sure you're not mixing around pets or kids or people um, that need supervision because you don't want to leave lye around. Of course you should probably write lye on the side, but I'm here at the shop so I know what this is, <laughs> but yeah, it is just take all the safety precautions you can. So don't leave it sitting around where there are kids and pets and other things. And then also you should maybe label it as well saying lie, do not touch, do not drink, something like that. But to get back to the containers, yes, so these are the two I use, but you can also use the HDPE too. Here's the symbol here. And it is actually what the um, lye from Nature's Garden comes in. So um, it's at the bottom. I know you can't see it, but it's at the bottom here with that symbol. And um, side note, another one. <laughs> 
Um, I get my lye from Nature's Garden. Um, sometimes I get it from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I've also seen Essential Depot on um, Amazon. They have it. And then stores like Home Depot and Lowe's also have it as well in smaller quantities. So there are other containers out there that are said to be good to use for lye, but I always stick to the polypropylene with the five um, because I know for sure that it's safe to use. But if you go back and watch some of my other previous videos, you'll see that I use some other things that maybe I wouldn't use in the future. And these things include um, a glass Pyrex glass because they are pretty heat resistant, but I've learned that they can shatter over time or break over time. And I don't want that to happen to me. So yeah, I don't use those anymore. And I also used to use a stainless steel um, pouring picture, pitcher, but I don't think there's any problems with that except for how hot it gets, but I use ice. So not really an issue, but it just wasn't big enough. And a lot of the stainless steel containers out there, like on Amazon, they have aluminum in there and you don't want aluminum and lye to mix. So um, with your containers or your utensils, you should not use um, aluminum. And then of course, don't use like a wooden spoon either. So now let me show you how I mix my lye and then I'll come back and tell you what to do if things don't go exactly as planned. When making my lye solution, I do like to start off with measuring the water content first. And so two thirds of my water content is actually ice. And I use these nice ice trays that I got from Amazon. They have lids on them and they have the silicone bottom. So it's easier to pop the ice out. But yes, I do use two thirds. So for this recipe, I think I have to have 9.65 ounces of water. And for about six ounces of that, I'm gonna do my distilled water ice cube and I do use distilled water and then for the other 3.65 I'll do water and sometimes I go higher sometimes I go lower the ice usually makes up between 50% and 80% of my total water content Next, I'll need to measure out my lye. So I'm gonna do 4.75 for this recipe. And this is the basic recipe that I give for most of my DIYs. So I'll measure out 4.75% of lye. And um, if you do get some on your table, that's fine. Keep a spray bottle with some vinegar in it handy because it will neutralize the lye. So before I pour my lye into my water, let me tell you what type of utensils I use. So one of my favorites is the cocktail spoon. They are stainless steel. I got them from Amazon. And most of the time I do use silicone spatulas or spoons. So now I'm gonna pour my lye into my water. Uh, just a reminder, I'm pouring my lye into my water, never the other way around. And I'm just gonna stir it as I'm pouring it in there so I can get that ice nice and melted. And another great piece of equipment to have for this is a infrared thermometer. Um, I, you'll see me use them all the time because I need to know what the temperature is of my lye and of my oils for soap. And I also use a strainer when I'm pouring my lye solution into my oils just to make sure there's no clumps. So sometimes when I'm really focused or really trying to work hard or just hot, I pull up my sleeves on accident. Um, don't even realize I'm doing it and I 
didn't do this on purpose just now so I do it when I'm trying to work hard and then my skin is exposed so if I'm mixing my water with my lye and then some of it splashes back on my skin or if I'm mixing my lye solution into my oils and I get splashed back what I have to do is run my um, wrist or whatever is splashed on underwater for 15 minutes but if you do get skin irritation you do need to seek medical attention and I actually did get that information straight from the MSDS sheet that comes with the lie. So it doesn't come in the mail with the lie, but when I go to buy the lie, I can see the attachment for the sheet and it'll say most of the things that I'm actually saying today. So just to recap, if you do get the lie on your skin, you need to run it underwater for 15 minutes. And if you have skin irritation, then you need to seek medical attention. And if you somehow ingest lye, then you need to drink water and do not induce vomiting and seek medical attention. And lastly, if you get lye in your eyes, then you need to flush your eyes for 20 minutes with water and you guessed it, seek medical attention. And in addition to those things, you need to remove the contaminated clothing as well. All right, guys, that does it for this video. I truly hope that it helps someone out there be a little less scared when using lye. And I'll tell you guys that the most that has happened to me this whole time, these years, couple years that I've been using lye, is that I get a little bit of skin irritation right here because I do this all the time. <laughs> But yes, that is the worst. Um, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you check out my people over on Patreon. I have their links in the description below. And I'm going to run a little thing over here for them as well. But yes, um, if you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe if you like the channel. Um, and then if you like the video, please like the video as well. All right, y'all. Peace.